Two cars are traveling around a 90 degree curve as shown. The two cars start side by side and end the curve traveling side by side. The yellow car on the inside of the curve is traveling at 11 meters per second. What is the speed of the red car traveling on the outside of the curve? Okay, so I've got a little drawing of some of the givens that I have. And I'm going to have my two cars. They're going to start off side by side. So I'll add that here. And they're going to end up side by side when they get to the end. So what that tells me is that the time for the red car equals the time for the yellow car to go around. And in terms of a period of motion, this is actually just one quarter of the period of motion that it would take for the cars to go around. All right, so what's my strategy for attacking this problem? Well, I know the times are going to be the same, and I have information for the yellow car. So let's start with some givens for the yellow car. So the givens for the yellow car, let's see, givens for the yellow. I know the radius for the yellow, that's equal to 25 meters, and I know the tangential velocity for the yellow is the speed of the car. Kind of a cool fact, whatever the speedometer says, that's how your wheels are spinning as well, that's the tangential velocity. So I know the radius is 25 meters, and I have the speed of the yellow car, and I need to find the speed of the red car. Well, what do I have for the red car? Let's see. Givens for the red car. I know its radius is going to be 28 meters, and I know that its velocity is unknown. But I know this fact. I know that the time of the yellow car is equal to the time of the red car. So if I can find the time of the yellow car, I can then find the time of the red car, and then I can find the speed, because the time of the yellow and time of the red are the same. So that's the fact I'm going to use. I'm going to find the time. And I'm not going to constrict myself to 90 degrees, so I'm going to pretend that they're going to go in a complete circle, because 90 degrees is just directly proportional to uh, my time for going around once. So let's get busy. Let's start with the yellow car. I'm going to use my equation that says the tangential velocity is equal to 2 pi r over t. And therefore, t is equal to 2 pi r times the velocity of the tangential velocity of the yellow car. So my time, my numbers, is going to be 2 pi radius for the yellow car, 25 meters, divided by the velocity for the yellow car, which is 11 meters per second. So the time, if it was to go around an entire circle, not a quarter, but just the entire circle, would be 14.27 seconds. Now I know that's the same time for the red car, so I'm just going to add that over here, my, uh, my givens. That's going to be 14.27 seconds. So now I've got the radius, oh, that's a horrible asterisk, and the time, so I can find the velocity for the red car using the same equation. So if I do that, I know what's different this time is the radius is not 25, but it's 28 meters. Same equation, velocity, tangential velocity is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. Um, and velocity is my unknown, so I'll leave it like that. 2 pi is, I'm sorry, vt is equal to 2 pi 28 meters divided by the time, which is 14.27 seconds. And that gives me a tangential velocity for the red car of 12.32 meters per second, or three sig figs, 12.3 meters per second. Horrible decimal. So let's see, from 11 on the inside to 12.3, that's about two and a half miles per hour faster on the outside if they start off side by side and they end up side by side.